Okay, moving on to the last example, um, what we're going to do first is just quickly um, have some organisation of what we've got so far. So I'm going to go there for outlines, which currently um, we've left behind, and new layer, which will go underneath that, um, and that can be hold clips. <coughs> These will be the clips eventually that we use as receivers. Um, so basically we just need to select all of the movie clips that we've created. Um, we can do that by shift, holding shift and clicking with the selection tool and then right click to cut then to paste in place we select the layer and then right click on the stage paste in place so now those lines um, hang over the top and eventually we'll probably put an outline on the clips themselves but for now I'm not happy with that. What we're going to do is we're going to work in an external um, script file in this example um, just to keep everything nice and tidy really um, so to select the document properties you click anywhere off the stage really or anywhere on the stage where there isn't an object and this will reveal some um, key options um, we've got the output we want to produce currently set to flash player 11.4 which is web based running the browser um, you can also choose air for different devices, so the main ones being Android or iOS, but also you can set up the desktop which allows you to target um, Mac and PC desktops mainly. Um, currently, and the set of the script, um, currently we're going to set um, the class as the name main, which is quite common um, as a generic um, overall document class really. So we click on the little pencil, it will give us a an error saying it doesn't exist, we click OK, then we click the pencil again and it will produce um, a blank file in Flash. Something to notice is the name main occurs twice now. One for the public function main, which is known as a constructor. This is something that runs when we first um, run the movie, so it's kind of like we use it to initialize, um, set things up and then there's the name of the actual class itself which must match the file name so when I save this um, and this should be in the same folder as the FLA file that we've got our graphics in just accept the default name really and don't mess with it so those are the basic rules that the um, file name matches the class name which matches the um, constructor name <coughs> so essentially what happens is um, a class is a, is a blueprint it's um, a design almost um, which we can put in place um, this happens to be that this is designed for the whole um, example and the public function the constructor is basically when um, we bring an instance of this um, so it's a bit like um, say for instance in our library I've got several movie clips and every time I bring one onto the stage that is a new instance um, and there will be some code behind that um, so what are we going to do first off we are going to try to make all of the clips draggable um, and then we will move forward from that to make them um, stop dragging when we let go of them <coughs> And, and that will be um, pretty much enough for this example moving forward after that we'll then start looking at um, making them snap to positions based on um, collisions so what we're going to do in the constructor is we will be adding eventlessness um, which means that every movie clip we've got is going to listen for something to happen to it it's going to listen for whether we've clicked on that specific instance on the stage, so the specific movie clip. We will have a function that responds to that, uh, which needs to be public to be accessible outside of the class file, should we need it to be, and that is going to be called um, drag clip. And this is the um, generic format for a, a function, which is just a definition of instructions, just a list of instructions we want to run when we call it. 
um, and we tell it what we're expecting to happen so uh, it's expecting or will be expecting a mouse event you'll notice by using this drop down menu and pressing return if you look at the top of the page it will then import the um, things that I need um, Flash actually does quite a bit of code hinting so now I'm going to put a curly bracket in, left curl brace press return and it will put the corresponding close bracket in so that is a function nothing in it, no instructions at this point in time but is how a function looks now we could refer to um, a clip by its name say p1 dot and tell it to use a function called start drag which goes blue by the way but actually we want this to be reusable and where we can do that is by using this little variable here called e um, this can be called anything to be honest um, if you make it a bit more meaningful you could call it my event um, but I just use e for a shorthand to mean event and that holds information about the event that has occurred such as the name of what has been clicked so just to test that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it inside of something known as a trace um, a trace spits out information and this is really useful for debugging so I will just put an event listener on the constructor for P1, which is piece one. Listen up. Just going to listen for a mouse event. Dot mouse down. The reason we use, we're going to listen for mouse down is because we don't want it to fire on click. Click is when the mouse has been clicked and released, essentially. Um, and we want it to be draggable when we've got the mouse down, but not after that point. Um, so I'll just call this function, drag click, save this file again, always got to save your um, class file before you test it, otherwise um, the changes are not affected. So we're focusing on this move clip here in the top left hand corner, if I click it, it's now giving me the name of that clip. So right. We can access other properties and also ask it to run what is known as methods and a method is just a list of instructions, a function um, that can be called so we say start drag followed by some brackets and a semicolon save, let's return when I click on it that's how it moves around, I'm going to let go of the mouse button and it still follows us because we've not told it to do anything about this afterwards um, so currently none of the others run and where we would do that, address that is to we could either copy and paste this um, and for 12 clips isn't so bad it's quite a lot of code so P2 should then drag um, if we click around enough we might be able to pick up P1 as well so that follows it around but what we'd like to do <coughs> is to make this a little bit um, shorter in the amount of lines of code we'd be using um, so for 12 or even more uh, movie clips, what I might want to do is to run a, a little for loop. That's something that um, runs for a number of occurrences. So <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box to store the names of my uh, movie clips in. So I'll just call that clips. And, uh, it needs to be public variable. put a colon and then tell it that it's an array which is the name of a box that contains multiple things equals new array press return and then brackets and inside the brackets we put what we want the box to store so um, the way we do that is between speech marks or inverted commas so I'm just going to copy this a few times There's 12 pieces, so the last three will be pretty straightforward to set up. And then move in backwards. So 
So then we'll have a box containing all of the <coughs> piece of information that we need. Also remember to get rid of that last comma. We don't need that. So there's all of the names and then in the constructor when it's first run what I'm going to ask it to do is to add um, event listeners. So what I can do is put um, for and then I create a variable which is just a box that holds one piece of information called i and I tell it that, that is zero and then I'll tell it that whilst i is less than clips dot length let's return to that one semicolon sorry not semicolon at the comma um, and then i plus plus actually no it is a semicolon curly brackets so it's a bit like a function um, in that respect it's um, got a condition that's met and this is where we tell it to add the event listener so root and then that is actually an array for everything that is contained within the movie so it's just a shorthand way of accessing things and then I'll say clips i which refers to uh, the number at that time so it will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 corresponding to these numbers in here because that's actually 0 and so if you count from 0 to 11 that's 12 instances refer <coughs> to that and then we're going to listen again for whether it's been um, clicked or mouse down in, in traverse. and then tell it to drag clip so hopefully that will set up event listeners for every clip that's in that array let's see not and then we'll try and pick one of them up and you see that one there so that any number of clips can be picked up like so we also then want to tell that clip to have an event listener um, for if it's released um, so we'll tell it that e dot target dot add event listener and we'll need a function to handle this when it's occurred mouse event dot mouse um, up which refers to the left hand button um, and then we will say release Save that and just create the function release clip. Now, there's some potential issues with this, um, but to all intents and purposes, it should work relatively well um, for us. What we'll do then is and paste this tell it that rather than adding an event listener we're going to remove the event listener so it stops listening for the mouse up once it's occurred and then instead of, instead of starting the drag we tell it to stop drag save that hopefully what happens then is if I click on something move it around and let go so then we can move things around the stage um, which is starting to take a step in the right direction okay and that's where we'll end this example